Uh, Grok is going llama. Let's reintroduce our audience to Grok, and we're going to have to, you know, have to have to explain what this llama thing is too. Yeah. So llama is the uh, Meta's large language model that has been worked on. It was released last month by Meta Platforms, Facebook's parent. Uh, and just like oh, what's going on with ChatGPT, it's the it's its uh, iteration and attempt to power bots and generate uh, human-like text. So, uh, Grok is another company we work with. It's a it's a chip startup focused on AI. The company's kind of ethos is bringing the cost of compute down to zero, uh, which is very interesting because the um, cost of compute with generative AI is going which way, Pat? Well, the cost per doing it is going down over time, but people want more, so it's going up. <laughs> so the cost per query on GPT is significantly higher. Uh, you, it makes me think about the you know, roller coaster going up, where it's like, you know, what you're getting is you're getting um, mass adoption of generative capabilities. Uh, we know with Bing, if everybody went tomorrow and started using Bing, the amount of demand on Microsoft's uh, data centers and compute would be exponential. And yes, you're absolutely right, Pat. Over time, the market would figure out how to do it for less. But overall, the amount of compute resources required to do a generative AI query is substantially higher than a traditional search query. Um, the amount of compute that uh, using GPUs, by the way, which is what most generative AI is being used, it's mostly being trained on NVIDIA. Um, I think they have about 90% of that market right now. And GPUs are relatively inefficient. Um, you know, they are, they're very, they're, they, you know, they, they suck a lot of power. Uh, and in a world where sustainability is one of the underlying governances of every business is, you know, we want to be water positive. We've heard AWS, we've heard Microsoft, you know, we want to, lower our carbon footprint. Well, we've got about 1% of the world's uh, energy right now being consumed by data centers, and that number is going up. And the so anyways, this kind of a runaround of how what's going on here with Grok. Well, the interesting thing is GPUs and compute and this relatively rapid correlation of growth in, in compute utilization means that uh, we're going to see all these challenges about costs go up. How do you deliver to our customers? What is Microsoft, Salesforce, Google going to spend? How do they build out their data centers to support this? And a company like Grok becomes kind of interesting because it has very unique uh, capabilities of software and compiling to be able to take a model like Llama, and this is what it did. It took the model and moved it from the NVIDIA GPUs and recompiled the code and started running it on its GPUs. And the findings were that, you know, they could do it with, you know, uh, I think more efficiently and lower utilization of power. And this becomes an interesting uh, question mark is, are there other chip players besides NVIDIA that have a chance to really be influential and potentially be disruptive? You know, we know AMD is leaning hard in on AI. Uh, I've been in a lot of conversations with Intel, Intel with um, Habana, Gaudi, and Open uh, One API. Open source is looking at an approach, but Grok's, you know, these startups, companies like Grok, like Cerebrus, like Samba Nova, are trying to build very specific application-specific chips that could potentially be disruptive to a, um, to an NVIDIA, run a model more efficiently. But the hard part, Pat, is when you have CUDA and you have all these developers building, moving models from one hardware set to another is really difficult. And so Grok did this in just a few days. And that's kind of the really interesting thing. I talked to their CEO about it is the ability to use their compiler without tons of developers having to optimize code to be able to move it from one piece of hardware to another was really, really interesting. It should be exciting to the market because we have to solve those two problems, Pat. We have to solve the cost problem. I mean, NVIDIA is going to make a fortune on this generative AI movement. You've seen its stock rip um, because of it. But... There needs to be a challenger here. And because the other side of it, Pat, the sustainability side of it is we need to look at doing it more efficiently. I know you and I are all about measurable sustainability. We talk about this all the time, not doing it for the sake of greenwashing and marketing, do it for the sake of the fact that we really have a challenge of creating enough energy to support all this growth. So using inefficient chips to do things like generative AI long-term is not the answer. So either 
the GPUs need to become more efficient, or we need to look at these this custom silicon, these ASICs that could potentially run these large models at a lower cost. Good analysis there, Daniel. And you know, Grok is one of the players that I do think is going to be left standing. It looks like, I mean, it appears to me they've managed their cash, their investments, and one of the biggest problems if you talk to end users, people trying to use this is the software. Um, and they would uh, like a more flexible uh, software uh, infrastructure and they do want more uh, competition. Uh, the benefit of a GPU is that as these models change so much, um, their programmability uh, that uh, the trade-off from being the most efficient um, kind of rears its its head, right? Because, and that's one of the benefits, and, uh, you know, heck, even people do training and inference on CPUs. It's actually, people do more training and inference on CPUs than they do on GPUs, and that's when the data center is dark and they're trying to use resources. So uh, different strokes for different folks. At some point, this, these models will change, and I don't know, you know, I keep thinking it's going to be five years, uh, but look look at the growth, look at the size of these models, that this didn't come out of nowhere. In fact, the industry had been talking about these large models, natural mo natural language models for uh, uh, forever. So uh, I'd like to see um, Grok roll out some customers uh, on this uh, as well. I do applaud them though for doing this disclosure and, and giving information uh, out. Uh, the company yeah. really doesn't, doesn't disclose uh, information like this, but uh, I hope it gets them some attention and other people uh, evaluating and using uh, their silicon. It, it's, it's the moment, Pat. I mean, if companies like these aren't talking in this moment, when is the moment? And it was nice to see Reuters, I think it was Stephen Nellis, maybe, that picked it up, covered it. Yeah, it was... Uh, yeah, Jamie. Yeah, I'm just saying it's good to see someone pick it up because, like I said, it's like it's almost as if the last month that Microsoft and Nvidia are the only two companies in this in this space, and you know there are other companies that we need to pay attention to. 